So this time around, I'm going to start with a very, very intuitive and very simple topic, right? And the name is population density. We have discussed briefly about this topic in the earlier sessions as well. Well, this time around as well, we are not going to go any further into it, right? Because, well, the detail of it, right, is going to be covered in higher programs. There are bachelors, your masters and further on. For now, we only need a very intuitive understanding of this term so as to the following topics and the following concepts that we are going to study, you can get a hang of what I'm trying to say. Yeah? Okay. Now, <coughs> what I can see over here and what you can see over here is that considering this highway, you can clearly see that, for example, during the day or maybe, you know, somewhere around, let's say, 10 or 11 in the morning, right? There's a high vehicle density or we can say vehicle population density. On the contrary, at somewhere around, let's say, 1 in the night, the vehicle population density is not that much, right? So you can consider, you know what, a particular piece of road, a particular area of road, and you can count the total number of vehicles in it, and that essentially tells you what I'm talking about. Let's take another example, right? So this time around, what we can do is, we can, let's say, take a train station, right? And we can then again see that during the day, during the peak time, right, the population density over here of human beings is high, and at night, at the off hours, right, the population density is relatively quite low. Now this time around, in the previous example, what did we do? We kept the area same and we varied the population and so we talked about the population density, right? In this time around, what we have discussed over here is that we have considered two countries which have similar population, right, but the land area of one with respect to the other one is quite large, right? As you can see, the two uh, maps over here of the countries, right, are drawn to scale, right? So China is a lot bigger in terms of land area as compared to our country, right? But the population of the two countries is quite similar. Right? So even the population, even though the population is kind of similar, right, because the land area of India is relatively quite small, right, the population density of India turns out to be more than that of China, right? Okay. But how does that translate into the things that we do every day, right? So tell me about it, right? Let's say I'm talking about, you know, 10 particles which are, you know, congested in this much of a tiny space, right? Okay, so in that particular case, right, basically how do I calculate the population density? I take the number of particles and in how much, and basically, you know, how much volume do those particles have to move around and do their random motion and collisions? Right? Now let's say I take those same 10 particles, but this time around I have taken double the volume here. Right? So in that particular case, what has happened is that the population density has essentially been halved. Correct? Okay. Now the number of particles while we were taking very simple numbers, 10, usually are in the powers of, uh, or of the order of 10 to the power 23, 10 to the power 30 and so on. So instead, many a times, we also represent population density as n by v. Since essentially you're not changing much, you're just dividing this number by Avogadro number to get this one over here, right? So sometimes we talk about in terms of particle by volume, sometimes we talk about moles by volume. Okay, now let's see whether you understood this thing or not, right? Tell me about it. We have two beakers, the same volume because there is a fixed lid on top of it, right? Both of them have the same number of particles. So the N is not changing, volume is not changing. Although we have sped up the particles in the right beaker because we have increased the temperature. Will the population density change? It won't change because neither N is changing nor V is changing. So both of them have the same population density. Correct? Right? 
so this is what we have now let's move on to another topic collision theory now this is then again another such topic in which we won't be going too deep into because we just need to acquaint ourselves with the relevant terms which will be used in many other concepts and topics not just in this chapter but rather throughout physical chemistry yeah so the first term that i want you guys to you know get acquainted with is mean free path right okay now let's look at the definition it is the average distance traveled per unit time by a certain particle divided by the number of collisions made by a single molecule per unit time per unit volume well that does not convey me anything to be honest and that's quite ugly to you know understand and quite difficult so let's simplify it let's look at this illustration over here now what is displayed is that essentially right let's say the particle initially when you observed initially when you observed was somewhere over here right okay and finally when you observed the same particle it was somewhere over here right now you may be have thought you know this particle got uh, went from here to here directly but that doesn't really happen right because in this box what i have not told you is that there is not just this single particle there are a bunch of other particles as well which we are not showing so this particle moves around collides with other particle deflects right then collides with other particle deflects so this particle does a zigzag motion and we have hidden all the other particles and we are just showing the trajectory of this individual particle right okay now for example this distance is the distance between the first collision and its starting point correct similarly this distance right this distance is the distance between the first and second successive collisions similarly this distance is the distance between the you know uh, second and third consecutive collisions of this particle now in a similar way we took all of these lengths and took out an average of them right that free sorry that number would be called as mean free path right so mean free path essentially is like what right so it is basically like the average distance right between collisions obviously every collision every successive collisions will not have the same distance between them no so that is why we take the average and that is why the mean term here means right it is the mean free path that is the path between the successive collisions taken an average of okay now tell me something right over here first when the beaker sorry when the piston moves down what happens to the population density so the population density over here when the piston moves down population density increases correct okay now tell me something right if the particles are more congested on an on a general note between successive collisions the distance is going to reduce right and as a result mean free path is also going to reduce correct right so as the population density increases the mean free path decreases remember this all right let's move on let's see what do we have here so now we have the introduction of a new term which is the which is called as collision frequency now what is collision frequency it is as it is what the term specifies what is this saying the frequency of collisions right so how many collisions are done by the particle per unit time right okay cool so now what do we have over here right we have two terms we are supposed to discuss two terms right we have the same example that we considered earlier what is happening over here the population density is not changing okay what is happening to mean free path in case left and case right well the particles are indeed moving faster right but there are those many particles only and there is that much fixed volume 
right? So the collisions will be indeed happening more frequently. But the mean free path, right? The mean free path will essentially remain the same. Understand, right? It's like if you basically, you know, develop a trajectory like this for these two beakers, right? On a static basis, they might actually, you know, give you the final mean free path as the same value or if not exactly same, then somewhere around each other, right? So basically, if you look at it right, the right version can be called as a time lapsed version of the left one. So the mean free part does not necessarily change here. It only, you know, for over this, this particular case over here, it depends on what? It depends on the population density. However, increasing the temperature speeds up the particles so they do start colliding more frequently. Correct? So collision frequency increases. Also, collision frequency will also increase when? When you have a congested arrangement, right? If you have a less congested arrangement, right? The particles will be moving relatively freely, right? And if you congest them now, right? The collision frequency will increase, correct? Okay, so these are the two terms that I wanted you guys to get acquainted with. We need not get into the formulae, we need not get into the derivation, although they are quite simple, but they are out of our curriculum. For more videos and live lectures on the JEE, click on the subscribe button now.